the Nintendo Direct had quite a few surprises, with one of them being Metroid Prime, the remastered version being shadow dropped on that day. I was a PlayStation kid growing up, so I never really played any of the Metroid games, the Prime games, the 2D ones, the 2D slash 3D ones. The only one that I have played recently at least is Metroid Dread. And that game was quite good. I was surprised by the way the game works and everything kind of about it. So I really wanted to kind of jump into the whole Metroidverse, but there was no place where I could start. I do have a Wii U, but to be honest, the 2D games weren't really my kind of thing. I really liked Metroid Dread, but I didn't really see the appeal of going back to the older ones. However, the Metroid Prime games, on the other hand, did look pretty fun. And even I remember growing up as well, seeing ads or just kind of the cover art here and there. And I would always, you know, want to play it. But of course, be, having a PlayStation, I wasn't able to. So this game being Shadow Drop was perfect for someone like myself that always wanted to get into this whole world, but didn't really have the means before or, you know, wanted something a bit more up to date, like a remastered version to jump in. So let's get straight to the point. This game cost $50. And it is a remastered version of a game that came out in the early 2000s. The game is more than a remaster from what I can tell when you compare the side-by-side -side images of the GameCube version and this version. And in all honesty, when you are playing the game, it feels like a new Nintendo Switch game. I know that's not saying a lot about the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Switch's hardware is pretty old at this point. But when you do go through the landscapes and the areas, it does feel like a new Nintendo Switch game. Coming from the side of someone that is very new to the series, this game was really, really fun. It is just old school fun, if that makes sense. You will have countless hours of exploration. There's no waypoints or anything like that. You do have to kind of just discover the world on your own, which in my opinion is really, really good. And if you have played Metroid Dread like I had, it will make sense. The gameplay is extremely fun and you keep getting cool upgrades. You keep aspiring to get more upgrades. You keep wanting to get better. At the same time, you get these moments of realization when you get a new upgrade that you're like, wait a second, I can go back there or I can go back here and open up a whole new area. If you're newcomers to the series, this will be a perfect jumping point. At the same time, if you're someone that has played this in the past or on the GameCube or even the Wii U or Wii, I am not sure how much you will get out of this, especially with that price. Now let's jump into talking about the story. When it comes to the story, I don't know if there is one. The key thing you are kind of given is that there was a distress call at this base and then yeah, things just go wild. This is quite similar to Metroid Dread as well. I remember they did have a long intro to that game, but in this one, there wasn't a lot. Again, similarly, they did have a smallish intro kind of introducing you to certain things and also what you're doing there, but that's it. It was, even that was quite vague. In my opinion, that does not really matter because as we'll discuss later, there's a lot to the game just by it being a game. So if you're in this for the story, I don't know if this game is for you. However, there's a lot to discover and pieces to put together. So if you're interested in stuff like that, you will enjoy this. Don't look at this game as Elden Ring or anything like that, where there is story to be found in the world. And there is story to be found here, but it's not going to be at that kind of a level. Now, of course, the key thing, gameplay. The gameplay is really, really fun. It is an awesome combination of putting you in situations where you kind of need to figure out what to do next. It's almost kind of these environmental puzzles mixed with, hey, you don't really have this upgrade or you don't really have this thing. Why don't you go here? At the same time, kind of when they introduce you to these upgrades, it is up to you to kind of learn it to its fullest. The game won't just tell you that, hey, you got this upgrade. Now you should do this with it. It's like, no, 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 you got this upgrade. What should you do with this? And I like that kind of initiative that they put into the player's hand it kind of gives you this empowering feeling that, hey, I got this upgrade, let me figure this out. I got this into the situation, let me figure out where to go next. And I'm sure for people that have played these kinds of games before, this is not new news. But again, for someone like myself, this is really, really good. So it is a first person shooting game. You move with the left stick, you aim with the right. When it comes to shooting, you hit it with the top right button, wherever the trigger is. One thing you need to kind of get used to is that you don't just hold down the trigger. You do need to kind of tap it or click it a number of times or anytime you want to shoot. Something that you have to kind of get used to. But as you're playing, like I mentioned, it does kind of get you into that zone. You do feel the urgency or the feedback you get by having to kind of press it every time. You know, you're moving around the environment, you're tapping it again and again. It kind of gets you into this kind of 
being Samus Aran, you're like, oh my god, I need to kind of keep clicking this because otherwise I'm gonna die. When it comes to the health, the health does deplete pretty quickly. Although you do get health packs quite frequently, you know, you do need to be on the move. You do need to be moving around. You are able to strafe left and strafe right by pressing the analog stick to a direction and B as well. And with the left trigger, you're able to kind of lock on to an enemy. So you don't need to just, you don't go down the site or anything like that. You're locking on to them. At the same time, you also have free range movement with the analog stick to aim wherever you want. But in most cases, you would probably prefer wanting to lock on unless you're trying to hit a missile in between a number of enemies. You also have different visor upgrades and everything like that. You can use it to kind of scan things. Also upgrades to your suit, the way you can use that suit. I'm trying my best not to kind of reveal everything, but you will get a lot of cool things and more cool things later on that you might not see in the beginning of the game as well. The enemy types in this game are really cool. They do change from location to location. There's a lot of cool areas to explore and it is a open world-ish game. It is kind of up to you in terms of how you want to approach it, which is quite cool because if I had gone a certain direction, I might not have gotten something that I needed to do another thing. It will all make sense when you play the game, but it is really cool how they kind of place it in front of you where, hey, this is an open world area, go wherever you want. And when you do go to certain areas, it does give a very different atmosphere and ambience depending on where you are. One cool thing I really liked at the beginning of the game was me knowing what Metroid was and also having played Metroid Dread. When you do the beginning part of the game, it does feel like, oh, okay, it's a Metroid game. You know, it's a Metroid game, except it's first person shooting and whatever. But when you kind of progress past that initial point, it kind of opens up into almost, you know, Hogwarts Legacy style of like, oh, Oh, this is that type of game. Okay, I get it. So it does really keep you on your toes, which I really liked. And I can imagine that at that time when this game came out for a lot of Metroid fans, that must have been amazing as well. So in terms of how the game runs on the Switch, it does run at a locked 60 FPS. I haven't really noticed any dips. It, even if I did, it wasn't something that was very visible if those dips did happen. So really good on them for kind of doing that with the game also looking so much better which is awesome for any game to kind of run like that on the Switch handheld. I've mainly been playing this on the OLED screen or on my OLED Switch. So the colors are very vibrant. They look really good. I haven't really noticed any pop-ins, tear-ins, anything like that. At the same time, I haven't really noticed any glitches or anything like that either. So it's really, really well-made game and the game runs amazingly. Would I have liked that this game could run at 4K or at least upscale to 4K for my 4K TV? Yeah, I would have, I would have liked that. Now, of course, music. This game does have a very cool soundtrack. It has a awesome 80s-ish aesthetic, but of course, kind of a bit more modern, but it does really, really kind of go with the sound of the game and the feeling of the game. The weapons sound awesome, the enemies and the creatures and all that, the boss fights, the bass hits at the right time. I did play this with, with my headphones on to kind of get that full experience, especially because the Nintendo Switch does not do a good job in coordinating or working with my Sono setup. But if your setup is connected to a surround sound setup, you will not be disappointed. I do recommend just kind of testing how it sounds on different things. I did notice on my headphones that it did not sound perfect. It sounded almost a little bit muffled and I tried it on a number of headphones. So it's, I don't think it's my headphones. I might be, who knows, but it didn't sound perfect. It was almost a little crackly here and there. When I do kind of put it on the TV, it does sound a little bit better. But again, something that you might need to test on your end just in case. One thing I really like is depending on the area, you do have a certain sound or, or soundtrack kind of playing to that. So I really kind of like it that it kind of introduces you to that area when you go to that spot. At the same time, there's areas where, you know, like the save point and all those spots where you kind of have that little chime or the sound that plays. It's something that you just kind of almost like a little feedback loop that kind of sets in when you go to these places and you know it is something that really hits you and i guess me because of playing smash brothers and also just kind of hearing sounds here and there from these nintendo games it almost makes me feel weirdly nostalgic even though i didn't really grow up with these games it also has a very eerie kind of creepy sound here and there even on the menu music and all that so i i do like the kind of setup they have it's you know has this cool kind of sound vibrancy to it at the same time it's kind of creepy you gotta watch where you're going uh the really cool thing is like when the music is playing and you go to any elevator the, the music just shuts off so it always kind of scares me a little bit for a second because i'm like wait a second what's happening something's gonna happen really soon so overall this game is really really fun you will have an awesome time with it my main problem is still with the price 
for that price, it is a little hard to justify it to everyone. I knew I wanted to get into this game and this series and it being on the Switch and having been remastered, it may, may sense for someone like myself, but it's hard to recommend to just anyone because it is a steep price, especially for anyone that is coming into the series having played the GameCube versions or even the Wii, Wii U versions. At the same time, it does kind of feel a little weird knowing that on the Wii U, you could have bought the entire trilogy, the Metroid Prime Trilogy Collection for around $20. That's how much I got it for. So this game being, you know, $40 and kind of being remastered again, which is great, but having just that one game, it, it is something that's hard to kind of digest. But like I said, if you're interested in this game from the outside in like myself, and you always want to kind of jump in and didn't know where to start, this can be that spot for you. If you have a Wii U lying around for whatever reason, and you can still access the eShop, I would also maybe recommend you to check that out and see how much the Trilogy collection is there because the game looks really great here for sure. But again, it's just a price because you're getting the entire trilogy for $20. It also doesn't help that the game, you know, runs at 1080p. I get that it's a remaster, but it's not, you know, running at 4K or anything like that. We still don't have a Switch Pro or whatever it may be. But if you're like me and always wanted to jump into this series, but didn't know where to start, this game is perfect for that. You'll jump in, have a great time. And if you're like me, you'll be excited for what the next game is, what's next for the series, if they hopefully remaster Metroid Prime 2 and 3, and then that will also make me excited for Prime 4. Thank you everyone for joining. It really means a lot. You know what to do. I'll see you next time.